it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms and today I'm going to give an update on my backhoe hauler kind of explain how well it's working I'm going to make a couple of modifications and I've had people ask me not only for an update but go on the comments of the other video and ask me for measurements or specifications so that they can recreate this so after I get this all set up I'll give you all the measurements and between watching the original video on how I built this and then having the measurements from here, you should be able to recreate it if you want to. So overall, I'd say this has worked fantastically. I've taken the backhoe on and off of it a couple times. No issues whatsoever. Drive right back on because it's not sagged. Pick it straight up. Saves the hassle that I used to have in connecting this. I have the 220R MSL loader and that mechanical self-leveling loader is great it gives me more lift. I can't even say 100% if I could lift this with the regular loader. I just, I have no way to know that. But what you lose on that loader is curl back. And since I don't have as much curl back, it feels like it's tilting down a little more than I'd like. Another thing that I'm going to change, this isn't really with the backhoe hauler, but when I built this, I talked about using 42 inch forks, and I have a set of 42 inch forks here and I built it to specifications for using those forks and instead I have the 48 inch forks on so it's not pulled tight back I'll go put the other forks on and come back and show you the issue I have alright so I just talked about the fact that I don't have enough curl back now that's made worse by the fact that when you lift on the forks you keep pressure here but there's more weight out to the front so it does this on the forks and the the issue there is these forks are only inch maybe an inch and a half thick and you have a four inch gap here so that extra gap allows the fork to pivot inside of this pallet i guess you'd call it so what i'm going to do is add some thickness to the front of this to hold this down lower I'm going to put another 2 by right here so that the front is 2 inches lower. And then on the other end, I'm going to put a 2 by under it back there. That's going to reduce the amount of movement it has and it's going to change the angle just a little bit. And the only downside to that is it might be a little bit harder to get the forks in because you don't have great visibility anyway. But if you're talking about everything that goes into moving a backhoe from one spot to another if the only sacrifice is you have to come out here and look at, from the side at the angle of your forks or have a spotter help you with that I don't really see that as a big problem so this front piece of wood was just a piece of scrap wood that I because I ran out of lumber when I was building it so I'm gonna replace that with a solid 2 by I'm gonna put another 2 by under the forks back there and a 2 by above the forks right here and then we'll see how much difference that makes. Then I'm gonna park it and I'm gonna demonstrate taking the backhoe on and off of the cart, carrying the backhoe, then I'll give you all the measurements. Alright, so I replaced this board right here with a better 2x. Then I put a piece of plywood right here. Honestly, I'm wondering, I could have put another 2x in there. We'll try this for now. I may replace that piece of plywood with another 2x4 if it's still letting it lean more than I want it to. My legal team advised me to put the disclaimer on this that you're using one piece of machinery to lift another large piece of machinery with a homemade wooden frame I mean it seems to be working but I assume no legal responsibility if you drop your backhoe also full disclosure I really don't know what I'm doing I just make it up as I go
So when I built this and picked it up the first time, I drove it all around here, I was shocked by the fact it wasn't trying to fall off, honestly. Um, I mean, it, I was on some hills, pointed down, pointed up, sideways. It was not trying to come off. And I really don't want to rely on that, though. I'd like to reinforce that so that if something changes, it won't try to tip off on me. So what I'm going to do, I've got four of these screw-in eyes. And I'm going to put one on each side of it here and run a ratchet strap across this to hold it to the pallet. Then I'm going to put another one on each side up here and wrap that around the forks so that it doesn't try to slide off the forks. And then I think we should be really secure and the entire process, say you wanted to lift this up on a high shelf or say more practically, I'm going to take the tractor in the dump trailer tomorrow. Say I wanted to take the backhoe too. I could pick this up with the forks, set it in the bed of the truck, then set the forks in the bed of the truck on top of it because my system disassembles, and then load the tractor on the trailer. The only things I have to do to move it like that is put those two straps on, and then whenever I go to put the backhoe on the tractor, I have to take those two straps off and slide this front board out. So if you think about it, that's really not that much hassle. So this is the way I've been hauling it. I now have a slightly better angle and I, I've got the tractor sitting downhill, which makes it worse. So it's a good way to test it in a, a worse scenario. So I think it is sitting a little bit better, but I also think putting these eye rings on here is a good idea. I'm gonna run one around the frame and then back to hold this from sliding forward. And then I'm gonna put another one from there over the backhoe and fasten it down there and we'll take it for a ride. Let me see if I can give you some relevant measurements. I built this platform 50 and a half inches because I wanted the outriggers to sit on the 4x4 and they angle up right here. So I wanted to catch it on that angle. So that's, that's how I got the width. For the length, we are 65 and a half inches. Then from this end, I'll try to just cover critical measurements. 12 inches in, you have the support that these outriggers set on. That has to be right where it is. Then, 
And so when I say 12 inches, that's the center of the board. Then at 20 inches, you have a support that has to be weight bearing that goes under this notch right here. These other supports could really go anywhere. They are just something for the forks to hit. Now on this end, I guess we'll just continue to measure from the other end. The center of this is 51 and a half inches from that end. That puts it right under the knuckle on the bucket. Then I've got four by four, and then a couple more four by fours here. The way all this is built is demonstrated in the video where I go step by step building this. Some people just ask for measurements and I want to help as well as I can. The way I did it was built it underneath the backhoe so that I could see exactly where everything needed to be instead of measuring. So this leg right here to the top of this is 13 and a half inches. That 13 and a half inches is the height the bucket sits on. So if you look at it, it's all supported. The bucket can't move backward. The bucket can't move down. The back of this frame can't come up. Even setting on an uneven surface like it is now, we're on a little bit of a slope this way and a little bit of a slope this way. We're still on the ground. I could drive under and load it right where it is. All right, so I'm gonna end this video with some footage of how I picked the backhoe up off of this stand. I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. In just a minute, you'll see links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.